Hello everyone, Tim Paul with Autodesk CAM team. I've recently been asked to give some examples of different ways to engrave parts. So I'm going to spend a couple minutes and give you some examples of how I would do it. So I have this part here that I was recently using to show somebody 3D chamfering and we'll use the same part to show you two different ways of how to engrave. The first way we're going to use is trace over geometry and the second way is going to be projecting a sketch onto a 3D surface but that could also be used on any flat 2D surface. So I already had this 3D chamfer here and I also already set up a template to trace this geometry right here. So I'm going to start by showing you how to use the template and then we'll go through the template and show you how we got there. So I'm going to right click in the gray space, create from template, and right here I have trace engraving with my tool 35. So all we need to do now is right click on this, edit, go to the geometry tab, I'm just going to select the geometry right out of the tree. So trace engraving. I'm going to hit OK. So I'll show you the stock simulation so you can see the results. And then we'll go in and show you how we got there. So you can see with a 90 degree chamfer or 90 degree engraving tool from Harvey, I uh, left a really nice engraving that went right down the center of the, the geometry. So let's take a look at how we got there. So I'm going to right click and edit. And as I mentioned before, we're using a 90 degree or 45 degree uh, eighth inch engraving tool from Harvey. Uh, we already showed you how to select the geometry. And a quick note on the geometry selection, we could have selected the actual geometry, uh, but would have taken more selections than if we would have selected it out of the tree. The height tab is going to be not necessarily how deep the engraving is, but how you navigate around your part. So you can play with these numbers to make sure you get the clearances that you're comfortable with. Moving on to the passes tab, uh, this is where you're going to get your depth. So on the axial offset, uh, I have this set to negative one and a half thousandths. And then you want to make sure your compensation direction is on center if you want to engrave along the center of that. On the linking tab, uh, I turned off my lead in and lead outs to get the results I wanted because I wanted to just feed straight in, go around and there you go. So that was simple and if we take a look at the projection engraving I'm going to go back to my feature manager I'm going to turn on the sketch I created so 3D projection. Uh, if you make a sketch anywhere above the surface that you want to engrave or project uh, you can use construction geometry Moving back to the cam manager, uh, again I have a template set up already and it's going to be projection engraving with my tool 64. So I'll right click and edit, go to the geometry tab, I'm going to select that out of the tree as well. So I have this 3D projected sketch and we'll hit OK. So again, we will stock simulate this to show the results and then we'll go into the toolpath and show you how we got there. So you can see you get a 3D projection along this 3D surface and the cam will adjust the depth to try to get you a, a, an even width line even on this 3D, 3D contoured surface. So now let's get into the toolpath and see how we got there. So I'll right click and edit. 
On the tool tab, I used the 62 thousandths ball mill. I uh, showed you the geometry selection already. We just pulled it right out of the sketch. The heights are similar to trace. These are heights to navigate uh, around your part, and it doesn't set the depth of the cut. On the passes tab, right here, I set the axial depth of cut again to negative one and a half thousandths. There's no uh, center of cut because it's going to drive the tool around the center of the line. And then I didn't change anything on the linking tab. So it's really that simple. And in force, something I talk about often is templates. Uh, this is a perfect example of why you would save a template. Uh, if you're going to engrave with the same tool often, you're often going to do it uh, in a similar way. So I'll show you how to save templates. So to save this template, I already saved it, but we kind of made changes and saved over a template. So I'm going to highlight that tool operation, right click on it, and store as template. Now I could rename it, or I could just grab it out of here and write over it and replace it yes. So it's that simple. Now it's there when you want to use it. So I hope these tips give you some tools to be more productive in your day.